All right, yes, so ready again. So we're going to look at the different reaction mechanisms. So for this question, it says outline the mechanism for compound Q with HBr. So this is from a portion of a question that is dealing with an alkene. So once you see HBr, you know that the only read, the only functional group that we use with HBr is alkene. So we're going to do the, the reaction mechanism for the addition of HBr to the alkene, all right? So I'm going to use propene for the alkene. All right, so remember now the hydrogen bromide molecule, it is polar. So the, the bromine is more electronegative than the hydrogen. So the distribution of electrons in the bond is not equal. It is much great, it is much closer to the bromine atom. And so that is why we'll, we will put a slightly negative charge on the bromine atom and a slightly positive charge on the hydrogen atom. So this is showing that the HBr molecule is polar. Remember the name of this mechanism for alkenes, it is electrophilic addition. So you're adding an, an electrophile. So once you have a positive charge, then that species is, a, is an electrophile. So this slightly positive charge on the hydrogen here makes it an electrophile. And so what will happen, the pi electrons of the double one will do a nucleophilic attack on the hydrogen atom. Now, once you have a nucleophilic attack, Right, what that means, this hydrogen atom is being removed, which means that this band is being broken. So don't, when you're on the exam, if you get this mechanism, don't just show one arrow. If you, have, if you are doing a nucleophilic attack, you must also have a theolytic, a theolytic band breaking. So if you have a nucleophilic attack, you must also have a theolytic band breaking. And this occurs in the molecule which you are removing the atom from. So the two electrons are coming from the bond and goes to the bromine. And remember, you only use curved arrows. So for two electrons, Two electrons, we use curved arrows. One electron, fish hook. Also remember, the, when you do this, the, at the end of the arrow, it is the source of the electron. And the arrow head is pointing to the destination. So the source of the electrons for the nucleophilic attack is the double bond and the destination is the hydrogen atom. Here, the source of the electron is the single bond and they are going to the bromine atom. All right. So what will happen as a result of what we just did? All right, I will give us a minute if you need to write anything I just said, because I need to clear the rest of the board.
All right. Can I erase this portion now? Yes. Everybody write it? All right. So if this band, so the two electrons in the pi band, we have used it up. So there will not be two bands here anymore. So as a result, this is what you will have because the two electrons in the pi band were used to pick up the hydrogen. Right? So the hydrogen is now attached. So here you have a carbon with three, three bonds, but carbon must always have four bonds. So now this carbon, it has a positive charge. So once you have a carbon with a positive charge, it is called a carbocation. And so in step one, we have the formation, formation, of a carbocation, All right? Now some additional info, what happened? We're going to add a little additional info. We have a nucleophilic attack. Because there's this multiple choice question where they mention more than one thing and ask you which of the following happens in electrophilic addition. And they put like nucleophilic attack, carbocation being formed, dative covalent bond, etc. And you will have to pick. I'm just providing you back with the information, all of what happened here. So we had the nucleophilic attack. And from the last class, I told you that whenever you have a nucleophilic attack, that is a dative covalent bond being formed. Because what you're essentially doing is using two electrons to form a bond with an X atom. And remember, both of them are non-metals. So it's covalent. All right. And we are, and this one. So we have formation of carbocation, nucleophilic attack, and dative covalent bond. Also have heterolytic bond breaking. I need to, I just need to scroll up a bit. Oh, all right, hold on, let me just add it here. Heuralytic, one breaking. Now, if you are doing this on a paper tool, you just need to put that, you just need to put formation of carbocation, all right? The stuff in blue, I am just added it. I'm just adding it as additional info. Right? But if you are doing it, you just show this step and put formation of carbocation, and that's it.
And this would be your dative covalent bonding here between the carbon and the hydrogen. I right, suggest so do not check if I can move on or I need to wait a little. All right, I'm assuming I can move on. So if you were on the exam, all you would need is this right here. Show the step and write formation of carbocation. Now, once you form the carbocation, we're going to have a nucleophilic attack on the carbocation. So this involves two steps. I'm going to draw back our carbocation. Oh, put plus Br minus. So you would get the bromide ion as well. And our nucleophile is the bromide ion. I'm going to put it below it. Remember, you, you must use the curved arrow. Right, and that's it. So in terms of annotating this step, you would just put nucleophilic attack on the carbocation. In step two, All right, so that's it. So you form the carbocation, and then you have nucleophilic attack on the carbocation by the bromide ion. All right, so ready again? Yes, sir.
And so it said state the type of reaction mechanism. So that is electrophilic addition. And they go with five marks. Oh, this was 2021. Direction. Give me a second. All right, so this question is from 2019. All right, so this is B, I'm just, so this is part B2. When it says B1, B1, B1 says state the conditions used to convert benzene into nitro benzene. So and what remember how we convert benzene to, to nitro benzene? Yes, sir. Um, concent concentrated um, nitric acid and concentrated sulfuric acid um, at 50 degrees Celsius. Uh, degree Celsius. So this was B1. And then it says now out, outline the mechanism for the reaction described in B1. All right, so we're going to do nitration of benzene. So first, the mechanism for benzene. Call it electrophilic aromatic substitution. And some uh, aromatic, electrophilic aromatic substitution. And aromatic is referring to the benzene ring. Mm -hmm. Electrophilic aromatic substitution. And that is because we're adding an electrophile. Well, not actually we're adding, but it is substituting a hydrogen. So we're adding an electrophile in place of an hydrogen atom, hence substitute. So in nitration of benzene, the electrophile is your nitronium ion. So the electrophile is the is the nitronium ion, and that is NO two. Plus, all right. So when we tell you that in nitrogen of benzene, we use nitric acid and sulfuric acid, H2SO4. These two are used to generate the electrophile. So the nit the nitronium ion is coming from the reaction between nitric acid and sulfuric acid. So the first thing we have to do is generate the electrophile. So this is our electrophile. That is what we need to use in our mechanism. All right. So step one of our mechanism. Let me draw benzene.
remember, as I said, when we are doing the reaction mechanism, we are not going to use the circle. We are going to put in our electrons. And remember, they must alternate. So the double and the single bonds must alternate. So this is your benzene ring. And they're going to react it with the electrophile. So just like with alkene, the double bond acts like a nucleophile. So it will attack your electrophile, which is the, with the nitronium ion. We are going to draw an arrow from, if you want to use this double bond, it's okay, but pick one of the double bonds, all right? And so it is going to attack the electrophile. Now, what you must remember, benzene, C686, all right? So at every carbon, there is an, is a hydrogen atom, all right? Just bear this in mind. The question, apart from a nucleophilic attack, what is happening here? Meaning every nucleophilic attack is what? Is also called what? Dative covalent bond is being formed between carbon and the and the nitronium ion. In the nucleophilic attack, that is a dative covalent bond being formed. So we're going to draw back the benzene ring again. However, remember now you use this double bond here, right? The pi electron in this double bond you used it to form a bond with the nitronium ion. So you cannot put back a double bond here. Now we're going to add the nitronium ion to the benzene ring. And we're going to show the hydrogen atom. Remember, at every carbon atom, at every carbon, you have hydrogen. Because the formula for benzene is C686. Right, so when this double bond attacks the electrophile, it is going to be broken. Nothing did not happen to this double bond, so you put it back. Neither this one, so we put it back. Now remember if. This carbon here, how many bonds is it forming? This carbon here. Is it one, two, three, or four? So which carbon can it be? All right, Let, just a second. Up here, that I highlight in blue. So. One. How much line is around it? Three. Oh, three. Right. right, so if it has three lines, it is forming three bonds, right? And remember, once carbon is not forming four bonds, what we must put on it? It must have what? So the, car the plus with the car back car back right. it Right, that is correct. It must have a positive charge. Now, when you're doing this, you won't show the hydrogen, all right? You don't need to show the hydrogen. I am doing it for explanation purposes. So you don't need to put on any of these hydrogen. Only one we include is this one over here. So even though you see two bands here, you have to remember that a hydrogen is there that would make it three bands. And so now, you, this carbon here, it would be positive. 
All right. So in step one, one of your double bond will attack the nitronium ion. Right. And so you're going to attach the nitronium ion to the carbon only. So if you put it on this carbon atom, the, the positive charge comes here. If you had put it on this carbon atom, you would put the positive charge here. All right. So wherever the double bond is, you can put your electrophile on any one of those two carbon atoms. All right. So all we need to do now, right? And let me just ex remind you about this. Remember we said that benzene it does not react like an alkene. Alkene does addition, but despite benzene having, having double bonds, it does not do addition, it does substitution. And if you do chemistry further on, you will understand that benzene, it wants to maintain its stability. So benzene is a very stable compound, right? But once you break any of these double bonds, its stability is not the same as before. So benzene will do whatever it needs to do to maintain how it was as before. So it needs the three pi bonds in it. So what is going to happen now? After you get this complex here forming, in the second step, we're going to draw about this compound now. Do it here. We need something to take off the hydrogen. Now, sulfuric acid is a catalyst, right? And one thing we know about a catalyst, it is always present at the end of the reaction. So if you start with sulfuric acid, when the reaction is completed, you must get back sulfuric acid, right? Now, during the reaction, of nitric acid with sulfuric acid, sulfuric acid loses one of its hydrogens, all right? So you have HSO4 minus, all right? Just a second. All right. So this HSO4 that you see in step two, it is from the reaction between nitric acid and sulfuric acid. It's just that we don't need to show it, all right? So we just need to do the mechanism. So this HSO4 is going to remove this hydrogen, right? Can anybody tell me what else I should do based on what we did in the alkene? Every time you have a nucleophilic attack, what must happen? What else must you have? Neutrality. That is correct. So we have the nucleophilic attack on this hydrogen. Therefore, this carbon here and this hydrogen, this carbon to hydrogen bond, it must break heterolytically. So these two electrons from this bond, they're going to go back into the ring. All right. And with that said, what you will end up with, right? So this HSO4 is removing this hydrogen. That means we must have H2SO4. And that is how we regenerate our catalyst. Now, if the double, if the two electrons in this bond go back here, that means we get back our double bond here.
and they have the NO2 here, all right? So the nitration of benzene is just two steps. So we have nucleophilic attack. On the nitronium ion by pi electron. Of the benzene ring. And then our HSO4 is going to remove a proton. It, um, I can't hold there. All right, when you finish, uh, just put, uh, where should I, let me see if it can move. So HSO4 removes, Hydrogen so we form H two is O four and the carbon to carbon double bond of the benzene ring. So this removes the hydrogen and the electrons goes back into the ring. So this one is not bad, just two. If you should go on the internet and look up this mechanism, you might see the, the formation of an uranium ion complex that is not needed for okay. keep. All right. So if you look on the internet, you might see an intermediate step between step one and two that is not needed for okay. keep. Just these two steps. Is anybody writing? Just checking. All right, so let's continue. I hope I was recording. Oh. All right, so in order to do this mechanism, we need to look at this compound up here. So the compound, and they give the condensed formula, reacts with aqueous sodium hydroxide to produce an alcohol. Now, apart from the mechanism, right, the fun what we call functional group analysis, for a statement like this, once you read it, you should automatically know the reaction it is talking about. So once a year, once, all right, by the way, which functional, which whole molecular series is, is this compound here? Anybody can tell me? Any ideas? I hear the general alkene. All right. So can just say halo alkene for sure. It is a halo halo alkene. Now, once it's halo alkene, you must know all the reactions of halo alkene. And the only thing we do with the halo alkene for cape 
is to react it with sodium hydroxide or react it with water. So you have the L alkene, react it with sodium hydroxide, and you get alcohol. So it says, state the name of the starting compound. So what you can do, or what you should do, convert this to the structural formula or the displayed formula. So, it's, so in bucket, so let me just write out this a little clearer. So we have CH3 bracket two CH BR CH3 bracket CH2 CH2 CH3. So if I'm joining the structure of this compound. It starts with two methyl group, right? So the only thing we can draw is one methyl group first. So one CH3 group, which means that one of these CH3 groups, well, the two of them, what this is saying, these two, what tell you that? Each carbon must have four bonds, right? So if you have two CH3 groups, they must be attached to this carbon here. So this carbon here, I'm going to put it in blue. It has a hydrogen attached to it, and it has two CH3 groups. One is here, and the next one, you, you could put it below or above, all right? It doesn't matter, all right? Then you have Br, no, something is wrong here. CH32, you have two metal groups attached to this carbon with the hydrogen. Then a bromine. CH32, CH, oh, CHCBR. Because I know something had to be wrong. So it is C H C B R. So we have our second carbon with a bromine on it and the next C H3 group. Right? And then I have C H2. C H2, C H2. CH3. All right, so quickly, can anybody name this compound? I will give you a minute or a couple of seconds. Or uh, tell me this, how many carbons are in the longest chain? Six. All right, so if it is six, what should be the parent name? Hexene, hexene. All right, so hexene, good. How many substituent groups are present? Can you tell me some that you see? Um, methyl, right. bromo. How many meter how many meter groups do you see? Two. So the diameter. Right. right. So one is here. And next one is here. All right. And the bromine is up here. Now, which one will we put first in terms of the name? Will it be methyl bromo exane or bromo methyl exane? Bromo, because it comes first alphabetically. That is correct. So it is bromo. And as I said, it is dimethyl. Why dimethyl? We have two methyl groups. That is correct. And then now we need to put in the numbers. What number would I assign? How do we you call know, it? You'll start from the um, lowest. So you will have the lowest number possible. Right. So you will have three bromo and two, three dimethyl. That is correct. So these substituent groups, they are closer to the left end of the molecule than the 
right end. So we start counting from the left end. So this would be carbon two, this is carbon three. So as you said, three bromo, remember you have to put a dash between the number and the letter. So two comma three dash. Mm -hmm. So that is it, three bromo, two, three, dimethyl hexane. Good job. Say the name of the reaction which takes place when the compound reacts with sodium hydroxide. So what is the name of the reaction? Nucleophilic substitution. Right. Substitution, right? Then it asks for the mechanism. So, do you know how many types of alkanes do we have? Before you answer that, sorry. How many types of nucleophilic substitution do we have? Two. And what are the two of them? Um, SN1 and SN2. Right, so we have SN1 and SN2. All right, what type of, what type of halo alkane will undergo SN1? Um, for SN1, a tertiary halo alkane. All right, it can be tertiary or? Um, or secondary. secondary. Right. So secondary and tertiary halo alkane will do SN1, which means that primary halo alkane will do SN2. Can you tell me the type of halo alkane that this compound is? It looks like a tertiary. And tell me why you say tertiary, so we can all understand. Um, the reason I said tertiary because um the halogen that is attached to the carbon. All right, let me highlight that. So we have this carbon with the halogen. Continue. That carbon that has mm -hmm. the halo is attached to three other carbon atoms. That is correct. When the carbon with the halogen is in direct contact with three other carbons, it is a tertiary halo alkane. They are correct. So we're, so we're going to do SN2, so nucleophilic substitution, specific, sorry, SN1, specifically SN1. Okay? Because based on this, Based on this chapter, it is a tertiary halo alkane. All right. Let me scroll down and get some space to do the mechanism. How many steps are there in nucleophilic substitution? Two steps. Right. All right, so for the purpose, I'm just going to, to focus on these three carbons here, all right? These four carbons. I'm not going to draw the entire molecule. All right, so C, E, C, H, S, S. I'm going to put the bromine down here. Doesn't really matter. All right, so in SN1, so we're doing SN1. Anybody know the first step? Or what should happen in the first step? Sir, can you please repeat? I was asking if anyone know what would happen in the first step of an SN1 mechanism. So, so we write the sodium hydroxide to the bottom and then we put the arrow pointing to the um to the central carbon or the carbon that attached to the to the halogen. All right, that that you just described it would be SN2. So in SN1 the first thing that happens 
is oh, again the form the carbon cation right. right that right. is correct right so the first thing we have is formation of the carbocation and how would we get the carbocation catalytic right so the power bond to halogen bond it is going to break heterolytically All right, so this is step one. We have formation of carbocation. And for those who join for the marathon, in the classroom, there is PowerPoint on Halo Alkane. About four PowerPoint is in there, so you can check them for information if you want. All right, so step one, formation of carbocation. And what would happen in step two? Um, in step two, new step two, we have a on the carbocation. Uh, that is correct. And in what is the nucleophile in this instance? What will, what will act as the nucleophile? Is it the bromide ion? Hydroxide ion. Right. No, it will be the hydroxide. That is correct. And this is how you end up with the alcohol. Right? And that is your mechanism. So oh, let us just annotate step two. For step two, we have nuclear. Nucleophilic attack and carbocation. By hydroxide ion. I see a former carbocation and then you have a nucleophilic attack. Inside of this solution, uh, there was this question. Let me ask if you remember. What if they add to add to this solution silver ions? What would be your observation? Uh, what do you think would happen? It has nothing to do with organic chemistry. As a hint. Silver ions. Right. If you added it to the solution, and it has nothing to, to do with organic chem in terms of the answer. So you talk about the reaction of it since I know in the series. All right. So the, the silver, remember I have the bromide ion. And now if you add silver ions, you would get a precipitate of silver bromide. Yeah. Because you have a halogen in there, I remember silver with a halide ion, they form precipitates in solution. But the site on our pulse paper, I don't remember which one. For, for one mark. But this is qualitative analysis, as you can see. They just choose to add it in there. All right, so we can turn. One could be yellow in color, right? If it was iodide, if it was iodide, it would have been yellow. For bromide, it is cream. And if it is 
chloride ion, it is white. All right, so everyone good with this mechanism now? All right, so let's move on. Sir, what were you saying about the marathon? Just now? No, I was saying that the students who joined the classroom for the marathon, I was just telling that there are some, there are some PowerPoints in the classroom that you can access. That, has to deal with L alkenes, alkenes, isomerism. So you can view them if you want. All right, let me see why I showed this reaction. I am not ready for this part as yet. This part is dealing with functional group analysis, but I think there's a mechanism, you see, right? So it says, using curved arrows to show the movement of electrons, right, the mechanism for the conversion of A to B. So let's look at A to B. All right, A, basically did, we just, we did this one already, all right. What is the, which reaction is occurring? in converting A to B. So electrophilic addition. Right, because once it's HBr, we know that the angle compound we react HBr with is an alkene. All right. So identify the reaction mechanisms leading to compound B. What is, which one would lead to compound C? Nucleophilic. That is correct. Because A to B, you would get a halo alkene. So once you add hydrogen bromide to an alkene, you would get an halo alkene. And as you just saw, when you react sodium hydroxide with the halo alkene, you would get an alcohol. And so the mechanism for B to C is nuclear. Substitution. You should be specific. Substitution. Based on this alkene, let me draw this structure quickly. So compound A, CH3, CH, C, CH3. Right after that is CH2 and then CH3. So this carbon right here, this carbon has three bonds and this carbon has three bonds. So a double bond should go here. And then adding hydrogen bromide, which of these carbons should we put the hydrogen on? Which of these one? Is it A, carbon A or carbon B? A. Right. Can you tell me why? Um, because of Markon Markon Kovnikov. Mar right. Yeah. Markovnikov, right. Uh -huh. Right. So if you break the double bond, you would put the hydrogen of hydrogen bromide here and the bromine here. So what type of halo alkene is this compound? A tertiary. Right. And so if it is a tertiary halo alkene, what type of nucleophilic substitution will it undergo? SN1 or SN2? 
S and one is correct. Right. So identify the and this one is electrophilic addition. Right, so we don't need to do arts. So because we just did this one. So the first thing that would happen, I'm just going to just drop the HBR below it. So we know that the HBR should be polarized, right? And then you have the double bond that would attack the hydrogen and this bond breaks heterolytically. So just like what we did at the start of the class. And then of course, you would get the carbocation and the bromide ion would command attack the carbocation. Is that clear? Any question? We're good, right? Just checking. Okay. It's the same thing that we did at the start of the class. All right. So let's look at the next mechanism coming up. All right, so that would have been it for four marks. This is from which year, 2016. Using outline the mechanism. Uh, outline the mechanism for reaction one. So 26. This was 2018. Give me a second. All right, so 20, 2016 part D, reaction one, it is the conversion of, on the board. This is parabromo methyl benzene. How would we get this conversion? What is the reagent you would use? Uh, FEBR. All right, FEBR. No, not HBR. We would need BR2. And what else? Um, and, and FEBR3. Three. Yeah, Fe Br3. So Fe Br3 is the catalyst. All right. Question: Why is bromine in this position? Let me see if you if you remember. So because of the earth and the para. Yeah, but exactly what I wanted to be specific. So because it's um the activator. Which one is the activator? Is the activating group? All right, so the one, the activating groups are with, with art and para. All right, so the methyl group is an activating group. Therefore, direct in this case, it is directing it to the para position, right? So it is because, so the reason why the bromine is in this position is because the methyl group is an activating group. And as I said, there are auto para directors. All right, so let us do the mechanism now for. By the way, what is the name of this reaction? So you're adding bromine. Bromine is in group seven. So once you're adding something from group seven, what is that reaction called? Start with H. So it's halogenation of benzene. It's just like halogenation of alkene, halogenation of alkene. Once you're adding a halogen, so the reaction 
is halogenation, but what is the mechanism? So don't mix up reaction with mechanism. So when you're adding NO2, the reaction is called nitration of benzene, but the mechanism is electrophilic addition, or you can say electrophilic aromatic, not electrophilic addition, sorry. Electrophilic substitution or electrophilic aromatic substitution. All right. So for halogenation of benzene, no, the electrophile is actually a bromine atom. All right. So just like oh, to get your nitronium ion, you react nitric acid with sulfuric acid. Sorry, to get the electrophile in this case, we react Br2 with Fe Br3, right? And we get a complex. All right, so we get this complex being, being formed, all right? All of this. FeBr3, right? So we're going to start by joining our benzene. For some books, they put the negative charge on this ion and the positive charge on this bromine atom. So what is going to happen? Very simple, just a nucleophilic attack. The pi electrons again attacks this bromine, which means that this bond is going to be broken. We are going to draw your benzene ring. Tell me what I did wrong in terms of this, the diagram here. What is wrong about it? Um, one of the double bonds. Please one repeat. Of, um, a bond that is near BR should not be there. Right. So this should not be there. What else? And also it must show the hydrogen. All right. Anything else? And you must show the the heterolytic fusion. Mm, as it, well, something else on the ring. That is correct. Yeah. What I said, but something else about the ring. All right. Somebody said, no, not the BR on top. No, the, the BR can be here, but something else is missing. How many? Yeah. How many? How many bonds? This carbon here. As All right, let me see. Yes, I'm reading the message. Let me see now. The plus sign on top right. There should be a plus sign. Correct. All right. All right. So let us put a plus sign here. All right. Plus this BR with the F with the Fe BR three plus this BR. You don't have to drag back out. You can just put Fe Br4, all right? So what happened here? You are removing a bromine atom, all right? And you know how to set up the ring. 
here should have a positive charge and you show your hydrogen. All right, and so now you have FeBr4, put back here, negative charge. The key thing here is to remember that this is what you start with, all right? This is what is reacting with your benzene ring, all right? Take off the first bromine atom. And so you are left with FeBr4, right? So this is also two steps, just like nitration of benzene, halogenation of benzene is two steps. Based on nitration of benzene, right? And what I told you about benzene wanting to maintain its three double bonds in the ring. What do you think will happen to the benzene ring in step two? Any ideas what should happen to benzene in step two? How would we get back a double bond here? So the hydrolytic bond breaking. Resonance, no. So we have to remove this hydrogen and put the electrons back inside. So that is how nitration ended, and that is how halogenation will end. So remember now, it's substitution. So what is happening basically, this edge, this bromine came on, and the hydrogen is coming off. So in step one, you put on bromine, and in step two, you remove the hydrogen so that the double bond can be reformed. All right, so in step two, let me draw about the benzene ring. The sun is up here at NO2, BR, H, no one is there, no one is there. And also, if FeBr3 is the catalyst, we cannot end with FeBr4. When the, when the reaction is completed, it must be FeBr3, all right? So in step two, we are going to use back our FeBr4. So put back, so I'm going to draw it back like this, all right? FeBr3. All right, what is going to happen now? The electrons here, remember every, every, every bond has two electrons, all right? So we're going to remove this hydrogen, all right? And what will happen if we are, if we are removing this hydrogen here, what should happen to this carbon and hydrogen bond? It breaks. Right, and what happens to the electrons? Um, the electron is transferred. Right, back into the ring. So remember in, in the first step, you break the, you break one of the double bonds in the ring. And in the second step, you need to reform it. So to reform it, you need to take off your hydrogen. And it is the catalyst that takes off the hydrogen, all right? So remember in the case of nitration of benzene, HSO4 took off the hydrogen. So in this one, in order to get back FeBr3, we need to get rid of this bromine here. So what happened here? All right, let me use a different thing now. So for this, you are going to get three products. Benzene ring for sure. With the B, oh, uh, what I did here, we should not, 
we should actually break. So remember the original compound, the bromine, the bromine was down here, right? In the para position. So I should have used this. Let me do it. Let me answer it. So in order for the bromine to be here, I cannot use this electron. I would have to use this one. Is that clear? Because yes, if, I, right, if I use this electron, clearly the bromine is coming here. So when I use this one now, let me just erase this. All right, so the double bond would go back here. I would put the bromine here and put a positive charge. Yeah, put the positive charge here as well as the hydrogen. Let me do it like this. You have bromine and you have hydrogen. Plus Fe, they are four. So down here now, I would have to raise this, just fix this. Bromine is here, positive charges. Double bond here. Double bond here. All right, so all right. we would be taking off this hydrogen. Use a different ink, and then now this would come back in the ring. And that is how you would get back the ring forming the bromine plus HBr plus FeBr3. So you always get back your catalyst. So for this one, Anyway, let us pay attention to information put back our metal group at the top. Right. So it is two steps. All right. So this is oh, so this hydrogen is bonding with this bromine, and you get back a catalyst. So this one is three products in total. The benzene substituted product. HBr and their catalyst. Right. Oh, and these are the only two mechanism for aromatic chemistry. Anything to do with benzene, these are the only two mechanism that you have to know. Nitration and halogenation. There's a lot of mechanisms to study. But it's probably just one cup, all right? So you just have to study all of them so that whichever one they ask for, you can do it. All right, can I scroll on now? I'll wait a little. All right, I guess I can scroll. All right, so we know the mechanism is electrophilic substitution. Let's clear this. 
All right, what is this one? Same equation, outline mechanism. All right, let us see what this one is saying. Another bromoalkane. So this is a Hela alkane reaction. So we know this already. So we did Hela alkane mechanism. Oh, here it is. You see this here about silver nitrate. Here it is. Let me see which year it is. 2014. So bromoalkane B. That. So it's just right. So again, it's halo alkene. The right. so same thing we did before. So I say describe the reaction between a solution of D and silver nitrate. So this solution of D, right? If it, if it is a bromoalkene, we know that the bromide ion would be displaced by the hydroxide ion. So inside of this solution, you would have bromide ions. So the reaction between, describe it. So in solution, I write it on the board. It's one mark. The reaction. Solution D and silver nitrate will produce a cream precipitate. as silver ions combine bromide ions on silver bromide. And they want an equation for the, for the reaction. So it would be silver ions. Any equation that you are doing includes state symbols. It is silver ions with bromide ions to give silver bromide. So that would be the equation. If you don't put any state symbol, you lose the marks. So once it has a charge, it has to be aqueous. Mm -hmm. And group one, group seven elements, with silver or lead, they form a precipitate because they are insoluble. All right, so let me see the next mechanism coming up. What is the mechanism for the reaction between compound A and HBr? Again, that is electrophilic addition. That's a repeat. Let me see if it's the one with three radicals. Hopefully, we can. I show the steps involved in. This is a repeat again. All right, let me just run through it again. This is what is on page 11. This is, can't we go this one? <laughs> Outline the mech. Can't we go this one? Let me see if I can make it out. Just give me a second. This is on 2021. So in 2021, they sent back the addition of H bear again. So I didn't put it in this. So we got two mechanisms in 2021. Electrophilic addition to the alkene, HBr, and free radical substitution. So we're going to run through the mechanism 
for free radical substitution. All right, so I'm just going to use an alkene. I'm going to use propane. All right, so we're doing three radical substitution. All right, and this mechanism, this step one, we have formation, formation of three radicals. And the halogen we are using is bromine. This is the only mechanism that you will use fish hooks. So these two bonds, they have the same electronegativity, these two atoms, I mean. So when it breaks, it is going to break homolytically. So we draw fish hooks. So this atom gets one electron, this atom gets one electron. Every bond has two electrons. Each of the atoms in the bond will get one electron. And that is, or instead of getting electrophile, and nucleophiles, we get radicals. So when bonds break homolytically, we get radicals. When they break heterolytically, they get electrophile and a nucleophile. So step one, formation of three radicals. Step two, Three radicals are consumed, right? which means they are used up. And new ones are produced. What that means is that we are going to use up one of the bromine radicals and generate a new one. All right, due to the space on the board, I'm going to use ethane. Right? So any alkene you get, the procedure is the same. All right? it, doesn't, it doesn't matter if it is one carbon, two, three, four. Right? The procedure is the same. Right, so I'm going to work with two. Just know that all of these lines should have a hydrogen atom. I'm going to put on these three. So in step two, the bromine, the bromine radical from step one So your radical is going to interact with the alkane. So when it says free radicals are consumed, this is where the bromine radical will be consumed. Now, this is like a regular covalent bond being formed where two atoms are sharing electrons. So it's not a nucleophilic attack. All right, so how do we show this? So what is happening here? Bromine is going to form a bond with this hydrogen. So we draw a fish hook. Notice it is just one electron, so it's a fish. Carbon and hydrogen have similar electro negativities, which means that this bond between carbon and hydrogen, it is nonpolar. And so it is going to break homolytically. So hydrogen takes one electron, right? So hydrogen takes its one electron and bromine one electron, the two of them combine 
to form H Br. Now this bond between carbon and hydrogen is being broken homolytically. That means carbon must get a hydrogen. Notice everything is a fish hook. All right, it's not a double-headed arrow. So the bromine, you just put carry the one electron to the plus sign, and then the one electron from the hydrogen from here. So when the two fish hooks are pointing towards each other, it indicates a bond is being formed. So right here, when the two fish hooks are pointing towards each other, bond is being formed. When they're pointing away from each other, like the carbon and the hydrogen, the bond is being broken, all right? So on this side, we're going to draw the two carbons. No, it has lost, it hasn't lost its electron. It has gotten back its electron, right? So it is now, it has an unpaired electron. That is what makes it a radical. If it had two electrons, it would be, have been a nucleophile. So when it has an unpaired electron, it is a radical. So you have your ethyl radical and HBr. Right? Now, propagation, oh, I didn't, sorry, let me just label the steps. So step one, it is initiation, all right? Step one is called initiation. Step two is called propagation. Propagation, all right? So in initiation, you get your radicals. And in propagation, we're going to use up one radical. And then we're going to produce this new one here. Now, propagation has two steps. So I'm going to erase step one. Is that okay to erase step one? All right. So in the first step in propagation, your bromine radical attacks the alkane molecule, whichever alkane it is. And in the second step of propagation now, we're going to draw the alkane radical. In this case, we would call it an ethyl radical because it has two carbons. And it is going to react with a bromine molecule. All right. So this bromine molecule, it is going to break homolytically. So you draw one arrow, not an arrow, a fish hook with the plus sign and the one electron from carbon. Remember, when two fish hooks are pointing towards each other, it indicates a bond is being formed. So a bond is being formed between this carbon and this bromine. And when two fish hooks are pointing away from each other, it indicates a bond is being broken. So the bromine bromine bond, it is being broken. And the carbon to this bromine atom here is being formed. All right, and so we'll draw two carbons and put on the bromine atom. And you would end up with a bromine radical, all right? Now for this question, this is where we would stop for propagation, all right? However, the process could continue again, where this bromine radical removes the hydrogen, all right? To produce a new radical and it would attack a next bromine molecule, right? But they did not ask to show two or three, so to just one, all right? So this is our propagation ends. So it is kind of simple. In step two, in the first step of propagation, 
remove a hydrogen and it goes with bromine, right? So you get HBr. You need, you have to get the, the fish hooks correct. So just remember, they must be pointing towards each other. That is when the bond is being produced. So hydrogen needs to form a bond with bromine. So you ensure the fish hooks are pointing towards each other. And don't forget to break the carbon to hydrogen bond, all right? So whenever a bond is being formed, a bond has to be broken as well. So you will always have the two things occurring, all right? And that is propagation, two steps. So initiation is one step, propagation is two steps. And the final step is termination. Can I clear the board and do termination? Or wait a little? All right, I'm going to clear it and do termination. All right, so in termination, no. Three radicals <clears throat> combine. All right, so three radicals will combine. So some two of the free radicals that were produced were bromine radicals. If I do this, oh no, let me use a different thing. Based on what I said about when two fish hooks point towards each other. If I do this, right, what should be my product over here? Anybody? So it means that when two fish hooks are pointing towards each other, a bond is being formed. All right, so someone says, yes, correct, Dominic. You are going to get BR2. So when they want to write it like this, or like this, that's fine, all right? So all I need to do is just combine two free radicals. Now a next free radical that was produced was this one. So remember that in this reaction, you will have a, a lot of bromine radicals, a lot of ethyl radicals, a lot of ethane, and a lot of bromine. So it's not like it's one of them, all right? If this reaction is being done, you would have a lot of them in the container. So don't think it's just one, all right? Because it's a mechanism and we are, and we are illustrating it, then it would seem that way. But in practical terms, there are a lot of them, which means that two of your ethyl radicals can combine. And when they combine, you would have gotten butane. And the next thing that could have happened is that the ethyl radical combines with the bromine radical to give bromoethane. The reason why it is called termination, if you don't have any radical in the reaction mixture, nothing will happen. As you can see, it is the, it is the radical that allowed propagation to occur. So if you use up all of your radicals, you will end up with just molecules and the reaction will end. Hence, it is called termination, all right? So, term, so 
free radical substitution, three stages, initiation, where you form the free radicals, propagation, which consists of two steps. Free, the free radical from step one will attack the alkene and you get the alkyl ra radical. And that radical in step two will attack a bromine molecule. And that is when you will get your halo alkene, all right? And then you do termination, where you just put all possible combination of the free radicals. And it will only be three steps because these are the three possible combinations if you only have two free radicals, all right? And that would be termination, all right? I'm going to stop it here. I'm going to have class more than one time, more than one time for the week, next week. Because we need to do functional group analysis and the calculations. So there's calculations for module one with molecular and empirical formula, right? Combustion analysis. I want to do that and functional group analysis. Just ensure you are studying, all right? So once we're done module one, the focus will be on just module two, and then the focus is on module three. So everything we're doing from module one now, just practice it, all right? Practice your mechanism, study the reagents, all right? So during the days, I will text you and inform you, all right? So like on Monday, I will let you know by school over 2.30, so by three o'clock, I will know, I will let you know if I will have a session, all right, on the Monday. And I will do it more than one time for the week because it's now ending April. So we will do it more than once to, to make up time, all right? So that will be it for tonight's session.